I can show you a beer. It's delicious and full of alcohol. Got fruits and spices while we shoot in your apartment. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your palate. It's from Samuel Adams. Can you believe it? Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> it's full of fruit and spice. It's so extra nice. nice. <laughs> Oh. Now I'll take just one more sip of a whole new world with you <laughs> on a brew with you. <laughs> we could actually write lyrics to this if we wanted to, oh, but yeah. we're not going to. We um, could. Yeah, we could. Um, That's what you last... should offer to Patreon is just a compilation of these ridiculous <laughs> behind the scenes things that we just do. That no, this is not behind the scenes. This is going on. Oh, this is live. Oh, we're going live. Oh, no, I'm putting that in. Are you kidding me? All right. We were we were we were singing a cappella. Sure. I That's not really like a cappella. Well, it was. Well, technically, yeah. it was, right? Yeah. Acapella is us harmonizing without instruments. I thought, oh, yeah, but I thought acapella <laughs> was, I mean, you have to have that. Oh. Mm, uh, and then, you know, someone sings. I don't think so. You know what I'm trying to say, though, right? Yeah. You got to have, like, a little bit of the beats and the melody. Right. And, yeah, right. I mean, I think, th- I, I think I thought the definition of acapella was just singing. It probably without, is. Without, without music. Singing in the showers acapella, then? Yeah. Okay. Then I sing a cappella every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's good practice. Danny, it is your topic. Woo! Let's yeah, close this out. Let's do it. Um, so this has been the month uh, for me just picking your brain uh, about pick, everything pick, pick. Uh, because there is a lot happening, obviously, in my life. It's been kind of the theme of the past couple of episodes for my topics. It's a lot on your way. It's a lot on uh, a lot of weight on your shoulders right now. Tis indeed. One more of them is interviews and the interviewing process. I am in the middle of a job hunt right now. Hunting away. I'm the predator in the forest, uh, seeking out my prey. Licking his chops. Via Indeed.com and Monster.com and LinkedIn and all these other social media forests that are filled with bounties for me to take. Cool. Cool. I have really been putting the pedal to the metal. Cool. Cool. I've been doing a lot of applying. I have been setting up many interviews. I had a very big one the other day. You did. Which... A lot of people liked my comment on Facebook, too. Yes. Uh, so hopefully thank you, you got the that. good vibes. Yes. There was lots of good vibes sent. And I, I'm, I think the initial stage of it went very well, which is a plus. Yes. I really hope uh, that goes well for you. I really do. Yes. I mean, I guess I could say it. It's not going to harm anything. I wouldn't say it. Just don't worry about it. Okay. Just don't. Just don't. Well, regardless, I have another one coming up soon. Different company. And I have been on both sides of this interview table Mm. through many times in life. Mm. Uh, As a former manager and general manager, Mm -hmm. I've had (laughs) many applicants come in and interview with me. Some great. Some just got awful. Uh, As an interviewee, uh, I've had several experiences. Most of the time, pretty good. Few and far between, bad. And at the tail end of that, because I've done sales, and sales is actually one of the ventures that I'm looking into right now, I uh, view sales pitches essentially as an interview because if somebody's going to sell you something, they have to get to know you. They have to know what you're about. They have to know... Are you going to actually showcase interest in this product? Uh, is this person a viable customer? What can I pinpoint? What can he, I relate with this person in order to get them to purchase this? And that, again, is kind of just being like on an interview table. I've had some ridiculous experiences with those. But I'm going to continue to pick your brain. Pick it away. This is March Pick Month. This is March Pick Month. <laughs> March <laughs> Pickness. We can think of a better name. It's March Pickness. <laughs> um, All right. Is there anything particular that you like to do to prep for an interview? And I mean, like, just on a personal level. Like, so for me, obviously, I like to do a lot of research on the company that I'm about to interview for. I like to go in. That's I like one. to go. I like to go in knowing everything that I can about it. Any does that does not matter what profession you're in. That does not matter what profession you're in. You do that for any interview. If you're interviewing for someone or a, or a company, that's the number one thing you do. You look up everything you possibly can about it. What is your step two? 
put my hole in the box. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Should have busted that out on a Christmas. Yeah. 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 Hindsight. It's yeah. always 2020. Yeah. I, um, I get prepared for stupid questions because I like a big part of the interview is, you know, you want to be yourself, but you want to be professional. You know what right. I mean? You can't, like if you showed this podcast <laughs> to a job interview, you'd get it. But I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, that's an instant. I mean, obviously, yeah. but actually if you're going for an interview and you showed this podcast, even that it's not you and there's nothing about you in it, it would, you'd still get the job. This is the power of this podcast. Yes. To show your boss, your future boss's video. I'm like, I don't know why, but I'm hiring you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's magnetic. What I get prepared for. I don't, I don't think jobs do this anymore though. I really don't. Cause I've only had one or two jobs that had this. And it's a stupid ass job. A stupid ass question is, where do you see yourselves in five years? Where do you see yourself in ten years? It I, is the I, stupidest friggin' question. I, I have gotten long, I've gotten that one before. It's so and it's dumb. Yeah, it's it rough. Is, I got that one on a phone interview, and I was just like, uh, "It's the dumbest ever." Yeah. Well, let me um, you know, contact the Sorcerer Supreme. And uh, see my future. Let's just look into a parallel universe and see uh, what's happening. I'm going to be drinking <gasps> Samuel Adams' New World. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a podcast. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, like, what do I say? I don't know. Manager your company, uh, doing work for you. Uh, I, uh, maybe not being here because I'm going to hate this job. I don't know. I, I, it's a stupid, stupid question. You say, and then even you say like, well, I see myself being a project manager someday. I'm like, okay, well, we don't offer project managers today, so obviously they're going to look into that, like saying, right. You're just using this for a job right now, but down the road, you're not going to be t- tired of here anymore. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. It's such a dumb question. But I, however, I prepare myself for stupid questions like that. You know what I mean? Yes. In case they ask that. Um, the biggest thing I also prepare myself for is just um, putting it elo- eloquently, uh, my job experience and my credentials. Because, I mean, I'm in a very different profession than you. So if I've been on interviews for, job, let's say, graphic design... I have to remember this piece that I made, how I made it, why did I make it, how long did it take, what was its purpose for, was it successful, was it not successful, what you know, what were some of the materials I used to make it, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? I have to, right. that's a lot of stuff like that. And also, too, again, this is apples and oranges because my job profession is different. Sure. I mean, I'm going, I could go for a job that's all like print and graphic design based. Um, so I have to prepare all that print stuff, but if it's a yeah. video based, it's like, they don't want to see any of my print work. All my right. print work is, doesn't matter at all. You know what I mean? It's a video company. In which case you just click play on this podcast on YouTube and walk out. <laughs> that's, that's what you do. Yeah. Patreon. There you go. <laughs> you want to see my video work? It's right here. Yeah, drop it. Drop it. Um, well, no. And I get that because again, yes, it is apples and oranges, but I do have to prepare for all the similar things. And I think the two biggest that I get the most in customer service work, sales work, uh, restaurant work, uh, what are you great at and what are you not great at? And what are you not great at? What am I not? I know what you're great at because you're great yeah. at a lot of things, Danny. What, what I'm not great at. <laughs> Thank you. Take the damn compliment. Yeah, I did. Uh, what I'm not great at and I, will, I don't ever want to flat out admit it in an interview. Uh-huh. So I have to put like my own PR spin on it. Uh, you, yeah, absolutely. And so what I'm not great at, obviously, has been a topic on this guy on this show before, time management. Uh, I, yeah. I, need to, I, need, I need better work with time management. How I spin that in interviews is I take on too much to a fault. So I will keep saying, yes, I can handle that. Yes, I can handle that. Yes, I can handle that. Oh, that's a good way of to, saying that. To a fault where sometimes I take, I bite off more than I can chew. That's a, that's, no, that's, that's a fair, yeah. that's a, that's a, but I think that's a good fault to have because you're aware of it. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. I would, I wouldn't, and I would, if this, I was interviewing, I think that's good to say because it, it shows that you're self motivated. Right. And in this last interview, I, I said it and I put my spin on it and then yeah. immediately told my interviewer, I am working on it. Now that I am back in a position that I am, I've become even more aware of it. And sometimes, since I've been in this game for so long, I just, have learned there are certain points that I hit when it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to get the help in order to get the task done and move forward. Good stuff. Yeah. That's very good. I think that's great. And, um, you know, uh, pre-interview though, you know, when you're sending the resume and stuff out like that too, you know, do you know that they're going to you know, expect you to bullshit a little bit? Oh yeah. Uh, because absolutely. you have to, cause the point of the resume is you have to, you know, it's, it's tough people because a lot of people get, 
modesty, confidence, and cockiness, cockiness all mixed up where you have to like say, you know what? I'm really freaking good at right. this. I'm going to put this on the resume. And you really have to you know, say, hey, <laughs> I am good at this or I can do this and really have that stand out. And so you're like, well, that's not necessarily 100% true or that sounds like a little bit too cocky. Like, ah, well, you're trying to get a job. You know, you're trying True. to sell your, you're selling yourself. I had, I had a brief phone interview this morning. In fact, so yesterday morning, I had a brief phone interview yesterday morning and I, I actually was able to utilize the phrase, listen, I don't mean to boast, but the person that you're looking for, the person that is responsible for having the answers and knowing what to do in any situation, if it comes down to it, that's been me for the past seven years of my life. I've always been the one that people are turning to saying, hey, this happened. How do we fix it? Or, hey, this guest has this problem. How do we fix it? Can you talk to them? Mm. Yes, mm. yes, yes, mm. yes. Mm. Uh, at which point that company was just like, well, we don't mean to boast our own, but uh, that is, you know, for those people that we are looking for, this, there's these benefits, these benefits, and these benefits. And I was just like, go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm listening. <laughs> well, and and I won't say which one, but that was oh, yeah. that was an interview with a hotel company, and uh, it was very cool to hear about all the potential benefits. And even listening to the potential benefits there, I flat out cut the girl off, and I told her I was like, "That's actually you just hit one of the biggest nails on the head. The the c capacity to one move up the through the ranks because you're such a major corporation, and two the capacity to travel and explore. Like if I show you guys that I am great at this position in Chicago, then all of a sudden you have something that opens up in Miami or Seattle. And I say, you know what? I'm going to gun for that because I want to go live in a different city for two years. That's outstanding. And that's yeah. actually the current job that I applied for. It's open because of that. The person who was in that position just moved out of state to go explore a different city. Oh. So when we go to California someday, Danny, you can say the same thing. Indeed. Uh, and in the meantime, if I land a job with said major hotel corporation, then uh, hotel rooms are super cheap anytime we travel, <laughs> uh, which is awesome. That's great. I, I remember, um, do you remember in high school, I used to work for the retirement home? Yes. And it was owned by Marriott. Okay. From just being a server in high school for that Marriott, you wouldn't believe the perks I got from Marriott. Yeah. Just for being, because I am an employee. Right. And it was a retirement home, but it was owned by Marriott. Yeah. So technically, I'm a Marriott employee. It was amazing. Yeah. Whenever we travel, my dad would just say, like, my son, you know, here's my ID's card. And whenever we get a hotel, it was ridiculous how cheap yeah. it was. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, I've known a, I've known a handful of people who've worked for Marriott, and I've heard. Yeah. Yes. The Marriott. Um, so I think, you know, interviewing... You know, there for the longest time, God, this is stupid. I hate, you know, I hate the process of, you know, making everything clean and, and putting yourself in this manner. And like, and oh, it's I definitely like, had to it's suit not, up. It's like, it's not a hundred percent yourself. You know right. what I'm saying? It's kind of like a, it's your, you're, you're being yourself, but in this fake professional way or this, this image that they want to see. Right. And that's, I mean, that's kind of part of the thing, right? And, and especially in restaurant work. But I think, and you you can tell me, uh, I think that in all facets of interviews, it's much better when it's a conversation versus a presentation. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm the only one just responding to questions and giving 20 minute long answers and, and trying my best to talk about everything that I've done, I feel like that's a horrible interview. Yeah. But when it becomes a conversation and it's a back and forth, uh, I get a question, I answer, I ask you a question, you answer. And it's back and forth. And I can, win. Can, I lose. I win can, again. We can joke about things. That's how this last big interview went. And I was like, I felt good. I was like, okay, I'm hoping that's a good sign. We'll see. We'll see if I get called back for round two. Uh, the hotel one is pretty much etched in stone that I'll get that next interview. But uh, have you ever just had an experience where it's just a really terrible interview that you're willing to share? I'm, I'm, I don't. Okay. I'm going to tell this story. Okay. And you're going to be the one afterwards if we're going to leave this in or not. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to take it out. But I don't... All I know is that this happened. It did happen. Sure. And I was interviewing. I was out of college. And I interviewed um, this uh, this one company. We're interested in they needed uh, an entry-level position. Yeah. And the woman who interviewed me I don't know why she decided to wear this for a job interview. She was going to be like a, a, a supervisor, but she was wearing like an extremely low cut shirt and she was busting <laughs> out of it. And I'm like, 
<laughs> there's three things. There's three things that are going through my mind during this. Uh, like, this is well, already amazing. Yeah. So there's three things going through my mind. I'm like, I'm and also too. I'm like 22, 23 years old. Like, right. come on, you know? Yeah. So I remember like, so one of three things, I didn't get this job, by the way. I just want to jump that. I have to clarify that. I didn't get this job. And I think one of three things could have happened. One, she obviously noticed me looking if I was looking and I was you know, like I couldn't help it because right. there it was it was not it was so it was like Just why there. wear that to a business? Yeah. And second, I don't know if I would want to work at a company like that if she's wearing this stuff. Any kind of a hotel is yeah, this? Well, yeah. Two, I wasn't really answering the questions well because I'm just telling myself, don't look down, 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 don't look down. Don't look down. Or three, it was a test. Like it was like this maybe she right. wore that because it was a test the whole time. Let's test your focus levels. So on in short. No, I didn't get the job, and I'm not sure. I think my mind, I was just going through it. And also, I was a young kid. It was like one of my first interviews, and a lot was going through my head. And that 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 that, that happened. Okay. I, I'm going to leave that in. That's not that bad of a yeah, story, no, is it? Okay. not at all. I just didn't, you know. Okay. I mean, that's that's not like family unfriendly. It's just no, funny. It's just funny. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Fine. All right, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. I just, I was being a little too cautious. A little yeah. too cautious. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think... I've ever really had any terrible interview experiences. I've had <laughs> I've had interview experiences where it's a two sided like I guess sword, a double edged sword, if you will. Oh, second time we dropped that reference. Right, and the interviewer clearly is not expressing a lot of interest in me. But mm. after hearing more about their company and learning a little bit more about things. I, on my end, am just not interested. Mm. I had this happen with Harry Carey. Uh, the Harry Carey restaurant group and I were interviewing myself and the HR person that I spoke with. I kind of laid out my list of, well, this is what I'm looking for right now. And she basically was like, well, we're, we can't offer that to you. And basically it was like, okay, well, thank you for your time. Bye. I'm just, yeah, I'm just <laughs> bye. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Sorry. What's the Nicholas Cage? It was literally just. <laughs> oh, nope, gotta go. Bye. Right, right, right. Um, I don't, but, I've done that. Yeah, I I've, have. On the flip side, again, because yeah. I've been on both sides of the table, I have also just had some kind of ridiculous interviewee situations that borderline made me uncomfortable because I didn't even know how to react in that situation. I interviewed. A girl one time who was physically shaking throughout the entire well, interview. You want when you were interviewing her? I was interviewing her. Oh, okay. And she was physically shaking throughout oh, the entire interview. That and, poor and I felt little dove. Right. I felt so bad. And I was just like, it's really okay. This is just don't Did you say that to her? Yeah. I was like, oh, you did. Yeah. I was like, hey, you don't you can relax. It's fine. This is oh, it. So I was like, this thing. is just it's just us talking. I just want to know about your work history. She did not get the job because, I mean, I can't, I couldn't hire somebody who was going to be afraid of social interaction. But was there any of her work experience? Oh, like, well, okay, this is a good example. No, I like to hear this because I don't want to, you know, obviously you're not dropping names or anything. No. So you're on the other side of the table. You're interviewing I don't even remember you're, you're, what her name was. Okay. Yeah. So you're interviewing her. She was shaking the whole time. Was it, was, was her background credentials decent at least? Or were they not even that good? That was another no, reason why I you mean, didn't it's, hire it's, it, They weren't that great. I mean, it's not like, you know, she had years of experience in the industry or anything like that. Okay. She was pretty green, but. It's just, I need somebody who can just accept a social situation and just react to it, right? That's that's the key. Did you email her back saying she didn't get the job? Um, no, I kind of just let her know that because I'd let her know it was like when I was bulk hiring and I was just like, listen, I have a ton of interviews to go through today. If we decide to proceed into an next interview, uh, I will let you know. Um uh, Okay, so you left it, but you left it like that. Okay, so knowing after a certain period of time, she wouldn't get it. Right. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Well, yeah, Yeah. that's fair enough. I never, I never like to leave people hanging. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I always hated that. Like, if I've been interviewed before, I always hated not knowing. Like, I'd rather get something saying, "You didn't get the job," right? And just so I can be like, okay, well, I don't have to follow up with them. Move on to the next one. Yeah. I, you know, what was your? What do you think your grace period was? uh, Is I, I mean. Some people say when you go for an interview, this is pretty crazy here. Like when my, for my quick story, mine. Sure. And then I'll I had it, Mike, the craziest job uh, interview I had was my agent calls me up and says, are you ready for an interview? I, I have a client who really needs someone real like quick and like needs someone for a long-term contract. 
All right. I get a call from her, not my agent, but the client. She calls me up. We have about a 10 minute phone conversation. Nine times out of 10, after you have a phone conversation, they want you to come in and interview with right. the company. And then after that, they maybe meet you again. Sure. I had a 10 minute phone conversation. My agent calls me back 10 minutes. Like I'm talking about a mi- like, so I had a 10 minute conversation with the client. And then immediately after that conversation, my agent calls me. Sure. She says, you got the job. I'm like, what? <laughs> and this is for a long-term contract position. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yes, I'm starting on Monday. And um, I really love that because the person who interviewed me, she was, you know, like n- not in a mean way, not in a mean way by any means, just like no bullshit. What I'm going to throw this in this and this. And can you do this? Can you not? How long will it take you? This and like just get to the facts and not like in a, again, not in a mean way. But just to the point, efficient, very direct. efficient yeah. way of just interviewing, like, which I personally love in interviews. I love just direct questions. It was great. I hate like, here's a question. I just uh, here's a very vague scenario. What uh, can you describe and expand and elaborate yeah. upon that? I hate that. Um, but I so grace period. I mean, if I don't hear anything back, pro or con, I'll usually give it about a week before I follow up. All right. And in fact, the last job that I have had uh where i was managing and gm and everything like that uh i don't know if i ever told you but i'm I'm sure i did because it was right around my birthday three years ago Mm. and Mm. it was like a dual celebration i got the job plus it was my birthday Mm. so it was like let's Mm. let's all go party Mm. but i had i went through three interviews i went through three interviews with them uh interviewed with both the owners interviewed with the, the gm at the time and I made it through all three interviews, then just didn't hear back for like a week. So like after a week, probably about, you know, 10 days, about a week and a half, almost two weeks, I followed up. I emailed, just mm-hmm. shot a very just short, direct email. It was, hey, just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to interview. Uh, want to know where the, what the situation is. If you guys have, you know, decided to go a different route, if you're still deciding, if you've decided to go a different route, if you wouldn't mind, if you know anybody in the industry that you can forward on my resume to, it'd be much appreciated as I am still, you know, hunting for a job, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Mm. I got an email back like three days later saying, hey, sorry, we've been kind of off the radar. We do want to offer you the job. Here's the details. It was like the whole job right. outline, you mm. know, everything like that. And I was like, oh, that's great. That's awesome. Show up this day, this day, and this day to fill out paperwork. You know, we'll go over your training schedule and you do that. I was like, oh, this is great. I, I landed a new job. Awesome. Come to find out that like two weeks into me working there, some of the staff start spilling all the beans. Uh-oh. And come to find out that they Uh-oh. actually they hired somebody in, in lieu of me. And he got fired in the first week for getting drunk and hooking up with a staff member. Whoops a daisy. Yeah. I actually remember you telling that story, yeah. but I, it was a good story. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so the, when when you said grace period, that's the first thing that came to mind. I was like, well, well that grace period of yeah, that, <laughs> Tom Foolery, <laughs> right? That, that grace period allotted some dude to get fired and open up the door for me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and you didn't do that, and the you you served them well. Yes. Um, also serving well. I think Samuel Adams' New World served us well. It served us very well. Danny, what are you rating Samuel Adams' New World? A whole new beer. That's what you hear, audience. <laughs> I was taking one last official taste. Mm. Um, I do like this a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm a big sucker for tripels. Tripel. I think I'm going to go 3.5. Okay. Uh, it is very good. It is not blowing my socks off. Uh, and it, we've, I mean, we've had some strong competitors these past couple of weeks. Yeah. Like we've, we've been hitting high notes yeah. on the beers. It's not that it's not amazing. It is a very delicious beer. Three and a half is a good score. Three and a half is a good score. Uh, it's potent. Uh, I can, I, I ate lightly after I got back from the gym today. I can feel this mm. already. Mm. I don't know about you. I know you it's ate 10 right. 10 freaking percent. You ate right before we started. Yeah. That's why I got some water. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, but I'd go 3.5, uh, again, Sam Adams, the godfather of craft beer in my eyes, they still do stuff like this where it's just, man, that's a really good beer. Uh, yeah. obviously I, <laughs> I'm glad we split this. Cause if I drank one of those by myself, I'd be like, be done. Done. No, you'd be, oh, 10%, yeah. Yeah. Um, we got to wrap this up. So, sure. um, I'm giving it a four and I think this is the very first time where I rated something higher than you. 
I think so. I don't think it, you've written you've well, written it's, over. It's funny because I think the, in three weeks it was you three five me four both of us four and now me three five you four. Yeah, this is um, I I love Trapels. I love. You're a sucker for the and, Belgians. And, yeah, and, and uh, the Belgian beers. And I think this is really good. It definitely, it, it's pretty much the definition of harnessing the flavor of fruit without just, it tastes like strawberries. It tastes like berries. It has yeah. this essence of fruit. It but has, also a lot of spice and I get a lot of pepper. Absolutely. Which I love. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, yeah, absolutely all that too. I, um, the 10% alcohol is, you know, it, it contributes to the sweetness of this beer. That's the only thing that hurts it, I feel, because the 10% alcohol I'll be honest, like, I think it hurts it more. I mean, people are like, oh, 10% whole good time. Like, yeah, but. But you are going to be done soon after drinking yeah, that. Yeah, it's like you only have so much. So, um, four. And I think that's a good rating for this beer. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's really close to what you said, too. So, yeah. I, I, um, I'm very happy that Sam came out with, um, I don't know how old this is, uh, this, uh, not particularly this bottle, but this brand. Um, but I'm very happy that Sam's, uh, still hitting hard. Yeah. And, um, I really enjoyed this. I really did. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching episode 23 of A Brew With You. You can follow me, Big Deal Blake, on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon.com slash Big Deal Blake. And you can find my co-host, Danny Brajas, at... Danny Adam B. on Instagram and Danny A. Brajas on Twitter. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. If you have any questions, comments, if you want us to try a beer, if you want us to talk about something, please put it in the comments below. Go to those social media sites that we just told you about. And most importantly, go to Patreon.com to get your rewards. Somebody vote for us to drink Steel Reserve. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. And remember, Kendrick Lamar. I'm all like, yay, music. <laughs> Just listen to his album. It's really good. If, if you like rap. If, if you like rap, If you're late out. to the party like us, go ahead and discover him now. Yeah. And it's fun discovering stuff. So discover sure. stuff. Discovery. Discover a new world with Kendrick Lamar. A whole new world.